Meet Dominique Bludorn and discover the secrets of a place called Altos de Chavon, hidden in the heart of Casa de Campo in the Dominican Republic and filled with an incredible story of heritage, education, sustainability, and passion. Join the conversation with her long-term partner and rector of the design school, Stephen Kaplan. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be part of RepFest and to speak to such a distinguished and important community of partners and friends. I'm joined by Stephen Kaplan, my partner of more than 40 years in the development of Alto Sichon and its many programs. Stephen is the rector of the School of Design. Let me give you some background as to how it all started. My father, Charles Bludorn, was an American businessman. He created a company called Gulf and Western Industries. By the 1970s, Gulf and Western acquired South Puerto Rico sugar, which owned, among many other things, a very large piece of underdeveloped land in the Dominican Republic. Through this purchase, my dad came to know and love the country, its people, and the area of La Romana in particular. He thought it would be the perfect place to create an important tourism project. And so began the development of the newly created Casa de Campo Resort, with Oscar de la Renta as the original designer of the hotel and the early villas. He also convinced filmmakers to use the DR as locations for their many productions. The Godfather, Apocalypse Now, were among the many films that were shot there. When film producer Dino de la Rentis built his home in Casa de Campo, he hired Italian set designer Roberto Coppa, who'd worked with the famed Italian directors Fellini, Visconti, Zeffirelli. Of course, my father promptly got Copa involved in the design of this newest idea, which would become Alto Sechabon, a hilltop village for the arts. My father fell in love with the stunning panorama high above the Chabon River. He envisioned a place where artists could live and work, a place that would showcase Dominican talents, where tourists could come and get a feel for the local culture. It was the beginning of cultural tourism. It was a time that was very, very different. We have to think we're, we're talking about the 80s, the early 80s. And he imagined a dynamic center that would include artist studios, craft workshops, galleries, shops, a museum of archaeology, restaurants, an amphitheater. And of course, the amphitheater was eventually inaugurated by Frank Sinatra. During 10 years, a team of artisans worked with Roberto Coppa on the building, on the construction of the village. They trained local craftspeople in the art of stone cutting, iron forging, fine carpentry. Sort of the great Renaissance skills were used in the building of Alto Sicello. He wanted to create a, tr a truly unique destination, an architectural landmark for tourists visiting the Dominican Republic and most especially for his beloved Casa de Campo. And yes, it's an extraordinary and unexpected surprise within the great resort of Casa de Cap. Unfortunately, he didn't live to see what has clearly been one of the most important achievement. And that was the building and the inauguration of the School of Design at Alto Sichon. Affiliated with Parsons School of Design, one of the great design schools in the world and the number one design school in the United States. We've been affiliated since 1983 the two-year associate level program that we've built has provided an education in the arts and design and most recently in film for thousands of students from the Dominican Republic and from 35 countries. Chavon has become a global center of art and design education, attracting artists and students from all over. By 2016, the school had inaugurated a new urban campus in the city of Santo Domingo. Really, we wanted to make our programs accessible to a larger sector of the country's student population, as well as adults that could participate in our continuing education and special programs. But this year, with the arrival of COVID, we've all had to deal with so many issues, personally, professionally. It's been a time of great uncertainty. We've had to really rise to challenges none of us have ever anticipated and that are unlike anything that we've experienced in our lifetimes. The pandemic forced us very quickly um, at Chavon to rely on our problem solving skills that we've long been teaching our students. How could we re reimagine our entire educational offering remotely uh, in a completely distinctive way, a way that we weren't familiar with while at the same time maintaining the intensity of the Chavon experience that we were known for and in, that our students had really signed up for over the years 
And we had to do all of this overnight. Uh, we had to move very quickly and within a week we did. We had to stay true to our mission. We had to maintain the spirit and integrity of the community that Chavon was known for. All of this on platforms that none of us really knew and were completely unfamiliar with in terms of our faculty and our students. But we've done it and it's been a year of extraordinary challenges. It's forced us to be flexible. It's forced us to be resilient. It's forced us to innovate. Um, what the future of learning is gonna look like around the world. How can an institution like ours play a role in that development? Not only in the Dominican Republic, in Santo Domingo, in Casa de Campo, Alto de Chavo, Una Romana, but across many new platforms of learning in art and design. I think Stephen can really talk a little bit about the school's mission, its impact, its legacy. He's been involved with me in this um, great journey that we've been on for so many years and he brings to it um, a world of experience and um, extreme accomplishment. So Stephen. Thank you very much, Dominique. And I just want to reiterate what a pleasure it is to be able to be with you today and talk about what has been the project of a lifetime for both of us. Going back and, and, and hearing you speak about your father and the early 80s and the development of the school and to realize that if we put it in context now, we've come along for, for four decades and graduated students whose children and now the grandchildren are beginning to study with us in the school. There are over 2000 graduates of the School of Design. Right now we have 200 full-time students and literally hundreds of people studying and continuing education in our facility in Santo Domingo virtually. Something we never, never could have imagined way back when we began very simply with a small art and design school. The question often is why an art and design school? Dominique's father was very clear when he spoke to me at the beginning of my career with Chavon in telling me that he wanted a school which would be able to bring people, be able to make students be graduates who could contribute something to the well-being of the, of the Dominican Republic and of the world. And so we, we wanted to have something more than just a fine art school. We wanted a practical side of it as well. We started out with a, a school which had interior design. We still have interior design. After not having it for a while, we brought it back. Fine arts, we now have film, fashion design, photography, communication design, all these areas have provided hundreds and hundreds of students the opportunity to study art and design and be able to find careers in areas that they never imagined would be accessible to them when they first arrived at the school. The school has changed the lives and, and our graduates talk about it all the time. They talk about their lives before Chavon and after and their membership in that community. They call themselves Chavoneros, which means people of Chavon. The, the students have the opportunity to study two years with us and get an associate level degree and then continue on to any number of other schools in the United States and Europe, but with a certain amount of facility for Parsons, which has worked with us on a curriculum that is the finest possible curriculum in the design field imaginable. The chair people of Parsons frequently visit the school and come along to supervise and give us ideas to keep our program as contemporary and as meaningful as possible. The idea of having a school which has relevance is extremely important to us. The Dominican Republic is a developing nation. There's plenty, plenty of room for designers to come in and help solve the problems that develop in a country that is just developing. Whether it's a logo type design, whether it's the design of a fashion item or a uniform, whether it's the design of a page or a magazine, everywhere you look in the Dominican Republic where there are designers, there are designers 
from Altos de Chavon. They're graduates of Chavon. But not only are they in the Dominican Republic, worldwide. When you think that Meryl Streep's Academy Award dress was designed by one of our graduates from Mexico, Rogelio Velasco. When you think that TED Talk has about 10 of its TED Talks animated by one of our graduates, Thomas Pichardo. When you think that Traveler's Life Insurance has its annual reports designed by one of our graduates, Victor Rivera. Many of these young people started out with us, many, many of them on scholarship. And they began and they have changed their lives and changed the lives of their families and their abilities to succeed both economically and more importantly, to have the aesthetic ability to feel good about what it is that they're doing. And as Dominique mentioned, problem solving is at the core of design. And we're facing ecological problems. We're facing problems with the current disease. We're facing problems in social and economic situations worldwide. And the more people that are trained to think out of the box, to be creative and to look for solutions, the more designers, not only designers of objects or of paintings, but designers of life solutions. Those are the keys to the future of a developing nation, of the developing world where members of the community of Central America, of the Caribbean basin, and all of our graduates are working towards a better place for everyone to grow and prosper and be well. And we're really now facing the experience of training our students online. And it's only because our faculty, many of them graduates of our school, our faculty is terribly, terribly dedicated to making the experience of learning online as rich and as involving and as interactive as possible. And our early reports are showing that the students are getting quite a bit, if not as much as they got in presence in a classroom, but they're getting a great deal out of the experience, in some cases even more, by being virtual. So we are meeting that challenge and designing our educational package to arrive where it needs to arrive and to continue the school in spite of the fact of the virus. But we never forget that our home, our launching pad was Casa de Campo's tremendous hospitality and absolutely beautiful village of Altos de Chavon, which is the home for us in our hearts and where our program still has some existing elements. Even though we've moved to the capital and moved online, we still look to Chavon and Altos de Chavon as a place where we return and where we continue to offer an experience that is educational, informative, aesthetic, and cultural. Stephen, I think you've really hit on all of the important points, and I think that's exactly right. And of course, the COVID situation is really what forced our, our closing in some ways of our dormitory residents in, in Alto Sechabón because we were no longer able to have students uh, on site. And that's really was what propelled us towards the situation of going online. And of course, moving a film program and a fine arts program, illustration, photography, fashion, all of these areas that within a week uh, to these platforms was an extraordinarily complicated um, experience for us. But it, it seems to be going, as you said, very well. But we're looking forward to being able to continue our workshops and our programs in Alto Sichabon. Um, and it, as you said, it will always be um, a place for us that is extremely important. It is um, really where the soul of the school begun and has begun and will continue to be. For years, the graduates of Chavon had the privilege of studying in one of the most beautiful campus settings imaginable. Casa de Campo has a gem, it's a crown jewel. It's Altos de Chavon, the village. As Dominique said, it was designed by Roberto Coppa, a set designer, and it became a setting for the growth, the artistic growth, and the, and the sensitization of so many young people. Imagine that from all over the country, all over the Dominican Republic, and from all over the world, from over 35 countries, 
pe young people came to a village, almost a, almost a Bauhaus concept. They came to a sanctuary where there were residences and they stayed in the residence and within a few meters were able to walk to their classrooms, study outside, the view to the north of the, of the foothills of the central Cordillera, the winding Chavon River, the early morning breezes off the ocean. All of this was part of, a, part of their learning experience, which heightened their sensitivity to beauty and to tranquility, tranquility and to the, to the, real, the, the real essence of what it means to be an artist and a designer. So that there's, there's no way, you know, we often say, you know, you can take the Chavonero out of Chavon, but you can't take the Chavon out of the Chavonero. You, this was an important step in the lives of, of so many young people for 40 years. We now are finding out by having most of our classes in the, in the building we have in the, in the capital city, which is an, an incredibly dynamic city. It's the first city in the new world. And it's a city which is really full of wonderful treasures of architecture and art. And by having our young people in such a dynamic urban setting, it gives a context for their design, which in some ways was not there in the, in the natural beauty of Altos de Chavon. So every, everything has its ability to contribute to the well-being of a developing student. But there's no denying, and, and when you see it, you, you, you can't deny it. When you see how beautiful the setting is of Casa de Campo on the Caribbean, with the at the mouth of the Chavon River, with the mountains in the background, you, you can't deny that this has had its effect on our very talented young art and design students. Exactly, Stephen. And I think another thing that's really remarkable in Alto de Chavon, which we've been proud of for so many years, is our wonderful Regional Museum of Archaeology, which started so many years ago and which is such an important place for, for tourists and visitors to come and learn about the pre-Columbian roots of, of the Dominican Republic, as well as the Artists in Residence program and the gallery, which has some extraordinary exhibitions of contemporary art and just the, the feeling of the crafts workshops and, and, and the community of artists around is really, it, it makes it a very, it, it's a rich place to visit and it's been an extraordinary influence, I think, for our students and for our many wonderful visitors over the years. Everyone from Osvaldo Guayasamin to Kehendi Wiley to Massimo Vignelli um, have all played a very big role in the development of, of Alto Sichon and its legacy. You know, these are all these are all pieces of a puzzle that went that come together for the experience of Altos de Chavon. So, with the students there, with the visiting lecturers that came in, with teachers, teachers like Nancy Graves, teachers like Larry Rivers, people who came in and shared their experience, Philip Perlstein, really world-renowned artists who came to this beautiful sanctuary, a place where they could be with students who had a hunger for learning. And that together with the museum, which gave a context to the whole Dominican experience, a kind of anchoring of the Dominican experience by relating its history from pre-Columbian through to the colonization. All of that came together with the Gallery of Contemporary Art. Every one of those every one of those aspects was like a piece of the puzzle that came together to make it a wonderful synergy, a wonderful coming together, a confluence of ideas and of personalities and of natural beauty and of concern for art and design. No, absolutely. And we have to also remember the luck that these students and everyone in the community and in Casa de Campo has had over the years to see people like Elton John playing in the amphitheater and some of the incredible performers that have been through like Sting 
and Andrea, Andrea Bocelli and, you know, between that and some of the great restaurants that are in the village, it's really, really been a community that's, that's, that's been quite extraordinary for everyone who's been able to participate in it. And I have such wonderful memories of all of those places. Oh, wonderful and not so wonderful, but I have some extraordinary memories of opening the amphitheater and the restaurants and all of our many years of activities that have been really quite, um, I think really part of what's made Casa de Campo such a unique destination are so many of the offerings that go on at Alto Sichelon. That is probably one of the most inspiring stories ever. I mean, it's incredible to think about, you know, when people think about a hotel, you can't imagine everything that's behind them. So behind it. So firstly, uh, Maria, thank you so much. And Stephen for, for joining us for this quick Q&A session. It's a huge pleasure and honor to have you both here. I wanted to answer one quick question that Emily asked with regards to travel restrictions into the Dominican Republic, because I think that it's one of the most exciting stories as well. I think the Dominican Republic has been one of the most uh, positive and forward thinking governments because, and I think it's very important for travel advisors to know this. Right now, if you have clients that want to go to the DR, if they're thinking of traveling anywhere or to the Caribbean, there's no better place than the DR. Why? Because firstly, they the government is providing COVID tests complimentary on arrival. But much better than that, if a tourist were to catch COVID while they're on vacation, the Dominican government will pay for your airplane change fee, they will pay for your hotel stay, and they will pay for your medical bill. So, I mean, the feedback I've been receiving is, wow, there's no better place to be. I'd rather be there than better than home. So it's really that inspiring uh, to think that a small nation like the DR is giving so much importance to tourism to the point that they're investing that much you know and so firstly i wanted to get that point across because i think it's it's phenomenal what the dr is doing and it's a uh, for sure it's a uh, it's it's remarkable um and then i wanted to pick both of your your brains a little bit we had a question with regards to e-learning um it is something that's happening in general when it comes to education i have a 12 year old daughter who's been you know suddenly threshed upon the e-learning world without choice but um i I think that, as they say, there's a lot of trends that are kind of coming about that are here to stay. Um, is that something that existed within the, the Altos de Chavon education system? I imagine that it is somewhat available now. And then the next question, do you see it sticking? Do you believe that this is a way, a new way to, to expand your presence? Can I take that one? Yeah, go ahead. You know, it's remarkable how effective it can be to teach on a, on a program like Zoom. We never expected it. Mm -hmm. we, we, we were classroom oriented education. And all of a sudden, we had to restructure our way of thinking. But problem solving is part of what designers do. So it meant each of the faculty members had to redesign their curriculum, their syllabus for the class so that it was enriched with visuals and not just talking heads like we are today, but rich visual connections. And I've been talking to our faculty members and they're telling me that there are certain aspects of this surprise necessity that they want to linger on because it gives an intensity and a focus to the students that is remarkable. And it's a challenge for the faculty as creative designers to design an hour or two or three of classroom work in which there's interaction, in which there's a visual enrichment. This is a skill yeah. and a building on that skill. So we're very excited about it and we'd love to be able to take some of our coursework and market it throughout all of the Americas for sure, you know, to teach courses like two-dimensional design and three-dimensional design online and to be able to sell it to people who could use it without having to travel. Of course, to come to our center 
and to have the experience of face-to-face -face education is the big goal. But for the moment, we think that we've got a handle on how to do it remotely. That answer and I'm, your I'm question? sure you're right. Uh, yes, no, and I think you're right. I think also there is the, the perfect world or the new world or, or tomorrow doesn't necessarily have to be either or, right? We don't have to go back to 100% physical. I think there is a reality where you can get the best out of the digital, which gives you flexibility and it allows you to log in, to, to do a few courses on demand so it fits your life. And yet enjoying that physical connection when and you make time for it. So maybe the future is a combination of both. Is that something you think is possible? Absolutely, this whole idea of hybridization and the idea that you can record a class and so that if you happen to be working during the day, you can take the class at the evening at your own, at your own leisure. This kind of flexibility was unheard of in continuing education. We have we have really hundreds and hundreds of people who take continuing education courses with us, but some of them have different difficult schedules to be able to come into a, a facility. But if they can take those courses online, they can schedule themselves to take the class when it's convenient. They can stop the class and continue. They can go back and review a part of the class that they didn't understand or that they need more practice with. So it gives a richness that we never imagined was possible. It's, re it's, really, it's really remarkable. It is, and I, and I think there is a big silver lining there. And when I look at my daughter, you know, you think, my God, for somebody to learn how to work, live in a, in a digital space and e-learning is very complex. But this reality didn't give us a choice. It kind of just threw us all there. We all had to learn overnight. And now that we have this skill, you can't go back. It's like, well, I, 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 you know, I was thrust upon this reality. It was tough. Now I got it. So I'm going to stick with it in some form because I get the advantage of it, right? I mean, there is, there's always a silver lining. We can't, you know, I, I love to, to, to pinpoint it and find it and, and try to highlight it. No, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's like the, the Zen Buddhist thing, which is one door closes, another door opens. And there's definitely been an opening of a new portal for education worldwide. And to experience, you know, we, we had one of, our, one of our faculty members took a tour with a, an interior design group through the museum of, in, in Barcelona. And to just be able to put in clips of a trip through this virtual tour through the, through the museums and through the architecture of Barcelona, and then to comment on it, to, to have, to have annotated virtual experiences that, that are put together in a way that, that makes sense and that are vivid for the young people who are watching them. And they can repeat it and see it again. And so they really begin to own it. They begin to, to be, it begins to become part of them in a way that education sometimes doesn't. It's that focus. You're in front of that screen and it's focused on what you're, on your learning. Yeah, no, it, it is phenomenal. Well, another question I have is a lot of, a lot, but you know, unfortunately we're looking at a very tough situation. It's a very delicate moment. There are a number of professionals in travel. Maybe, you know, there's a horrible, um, I don't want to say projection, but a, a possibility that at, till the end of the year, 50% 50, 50 of the travel industry will be furloughed or unemployed. That's like hundreds of millions of people. And so we have a number of people looking to think, should I pivot? What's my passion? What do I, you know, what's my calling? What can I do with this time? If somebody is interested in learning more and, you know, maybe getting into the school, what's the process? How, here I am a professional in travel. I've always had a passion for design, architecture, whatever it is. And I want to, take this time, I'm passionate about the DR, so I'm thinking maybe I can learn something and eventually have an excuse to, to go and visit Casa de Campo and get to know the DR. How do I go about it? Maria, you wanna take well, that? Sure, well, definitely we are very open to, one of the things that we've noticed is that uh, a lot of people and a lot of companies are taking this time to either update their knowledge on certain aspects or just, you know, career paths, anything that has to do with education. And we're, we're currently working on tailor-made programs for not just people in particular, but institutions. So definitely, if anybody's interested, we're always open. Um, we can either suggest any of the programs that we already have 
on our roster of programs or also anything that's tailor-made and we can set you up with either a professor or just a course that will really hone into what, you, what it is you need. You can visit our website, which is chavon.edu.do or write to us at info at chavon.edu.do and we'll be happy to assist you. And, and you know, one of the things going back to the previous question, but also aligned to this question is, um, you know, at the core of our mission is um, making education accessible to people. And because of that, we've had for 40 years, um, a very big scholarship fund that helps students from, ever, from all backgrounds you know, come to Chavong and be able to become professionals at whatever area they choose. And the fact that we're having to teach online has proven to be a huge opportunity of increasing that accessibility. So now we have students in our continuing education programs from Italy or Spain or Honduras, you know, so it really has, it's been a huge opportunity and we're, we're, it's here to stay, you know, and the, the good thing is that we're going to be able to do the best of both things, you know, you know, on site courses, but also online. So we're always Fantastic. open to new opportunities. Uh, Maria, Stephen, I have to thank Dominique. She, what a storyteller, what a woman, what a family, what a story, and what an amazing destination, Casa de Campo, what yes. DR is doing, and what an inspiring story, you know, with challenges and upsides, and that's how life is. And I'm sure around the corner, it's all more positive, it's all full of growth. So thank you so much. Our stage thank time you. is up, but we are at the Tomatino stage, so we can carry on any questions you have in the Tomatino uh, chat room. So once again, an honor. And uh, thank you to Jason and all the Casa de Campo team for making this yes. possible as well. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you for having us. Yeah, My pleasure. You. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. Likewise. Thank you.